fudge covered Ritz crackers. Have you guys checked these out? Limited edition, let's check it out together right now. Hey guys, welcome to Sunny Reviews. I'm Sunny, what do I do? See it, smell it, taste it, rate it. All right, listen, this thing here, I just saw this and I was like, oh, I need to have that right away. Like a zombie, I was like attracted to it. Anyway, we're gonna go through a little bit about the history of Ritz crackers, how they, how they come up with the name, how they come up with the logo, what's behind this Nabisco brand, how did that happen? I got a little history for you, a little trivia for you, so let's get into it right now. Here we go, let's try these things first. All right, I am very, very, very optimistic about this. I think this might be great. I like, I happen to like Ritz crackers and chocolate cover Ritz crackers. I mean, come on, what could be bad about this? All right, here it is. Got a whole bunch of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, twenty, thirty of them. Thirty of them. Okay, we could finish this in one sitting. Here we go. All right, Ritz crackers, fudge covered. Here we go. And we got to get to it kind of quick here because we are in Tampa, Florida. It does get hot here, and these could melt very quickly. All right, here they are. Fudge covered Ritz. You can see it's got a little, little bump here because the edges of the Ritz crackers are scalloped. They have a little, you know, little design to them. All right, anyway, let's give this a try. Smells good. What could be bad about this? The Ritz cracker, flaky, buttery, yummy. To me, it's like the best cracker out there. All right, so anyway, this guy, Sidney, that's his name. He's the guy, he was an artist that worked for Nabisco back in the 1920s, 1930s, during the Depression. And he's the guy who is credited for coming up with the name Ritz Crackers. He also, by the way, designed this logo. So that logo has been around for 100 years. Hmm, yeah, good. Oh, this looks good too. We can make this. Triple layer chocolate Ritz pie, mm, yum. Anyway, so back in the late 1920s, early 1930s, I guess, we were in the Great Depression. Things are not looking up here. People were having mulligan stew, which is basically stew with cigarette butts in it and cigar butts. I mean, people were desperate for food. And anyway, this guy, Sidney said, let's give people some hope. Let's give people a reason to, to live by calling this a Ritz cracker. What is Ritz anyway? Well, Ritz came from the word Carlton Ritz, I believe, hotels. Back also in the 20s, whatever, this guy Ritz was a hotel hotelier. Guy started a bu bunch of hotels by buying, basically he bought dumpy hotels that were going out of business and turned them around and made them all fancy and put the Ritz name behind it. So the Ritz name stood for like a fancy hotel. Anyway, so this guy who worked for Nabisco said, let's call these crackers Ritz and give people something else to think about, like hope. Like it's like they have their fancy pants cracker, their Ritz cracker, even though it's not gonna get them out of the depression, it'll make them feel less depressed by having a Ritz cracker. So anyway, that's how they came up with the word Ritz. It's crackers just to give people hope during the depression. Something else to think about, something to look forward to, something to play, wrap their mind or something to give them hope. That's why they called it a Ritz cracker. And it's been around ever since. Now listen, a couple of trivia things about Ritz crackers. You notice there's little holes in the cracker. You can't see them because the chocolate's covering them. But each Ritz cracker, did you know, has seven holes in it? Why do they put these holes in these Ritz crackers? They're not just random. It's for when they bake them, right? They bake them and the holes allow the baking to go through the entire cracker. So this way it becomes uniform. And you notice that Ritz crackers are never burnt. They're never not done on one part or another. They're always done the right way. And that's those little holes. That's what those holes are for. Also, to me, fascinating how this company started, Nabisco. So this guy, I think Sydney's boss, who started Nabisco. How did he start Nabisco? How did that even happen? Things just happen. Things don't just happen. It wasn't just, oh, box of Ritz crackers by this company. 
this, there was a whole story behind how this happened. Anyway, this guy who started Nabisco was a lawyer. He worked for bakery companies, right? That was his specialty as a lawyer. And he noticed that there was, there was something going on that he felt there was a untapped niche for in the baking industry. Anyway, so what he discovered was back in the day when they were bakeries, there were local, basically way back when, there were local bakeries. And they would deliver their bread and crackers to local places nearby. They couldn't go further than nearby because they didn't have the transportation to deliver things further than that. So our buddy here who started Nabisco said to himself, you know what, maybe what we could do is we could form a conglomeration of a whole bunch of bakeries, right? And this way we have economies of scale. And then we can use, you know, refrigerated trucks or whatever to get the products around to a bigger distribution area. So what he ended up doing was buying a whole bunch of bakeries and incorporating them all together under one roof. And the name of that company became Nabisco, which stands for National Biscuit Company. Nabisco, National Biscuit Company. Anyway, huge success. I mean, they were selling these things by the millions, even during the depression. And incidentally, crackers from these bakeries before he got it all together, basically crackers were sold in stores in barrels. Okay, so you went and you just scooped up your crackers from these barrels, hence the name Cracker Barrel. See how it's all coming together now, Cracker Barrel? So anyway, the problem was that when you would he when you'd scoop up your crackers, the bottom would get all full of crud and crumbs and disgusting, and then bugs would come and rats would come, and it would be really gross and disgusting. Anyway, so part of his idea was to get rid of the whole cracker barrel idea of having to scoop up your crackers and package them in nice little boxes. And he also came up with the, the um, like the parchment paper that Ritz crackers come in when you buy the package of, not the chocolate ones, but the regular Ritz crackers come in this like waxy parchment-like plastic container that keeps them fresh. Anyway, fascinating stories, I think, behind how the name Ritz came about. These are great. I think these are awesome. I'm gonna give them 8.1 best Ritz cracker I ever had. Chocolate covered Ritz cracker. What could be better than that? Nothing. Nothing's better than that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next Sunny Reviews. Have a sunny day. Later, later.